Good evening everyone. I've today I've been looking at three particular passages from The Reality of Being by Gene de Salzman and I would like to share them with you. In my 35 years of more or less non-stop reading, they are the most explosive and the most sublime things that I've ever ever read in my life and I would like to share them with you. Uh, this channel is primarily a Gurdjieff de Salzman uh, Uspensky one, although I do tell the odd joke and recite some very very bad poetry, uh, but as I say it is mainly a Gurdjieff channel. Uh, and, and Jean de Salzman lived to be a hundred years of age and she was the the leading pupil of Gurdjieff when he was alive and following Gurdjieff's death in 1947 uh, Jean de Salzman took over the work and one thing that Gurdjieff actually did was actually teach people dances and they were very very much part of the Gurdjieffian system and de Salzman taught the dances also but these, this, what I'm going to read is actually from the reality of being. I've never ever in my life come across anything like it. It's very hard for it to sink in, but let, let us try. I'm doing this by candlelight. Let me show you. I've got about, there's about, there's about 20 of them in the apartment. Not, not too close to the curtains, I hasten to add. But there we have them. There's, there's loads of them. Pillars, taper candles. Let's just put it to one side and try and not set myself on fire. Uh, the, as I said, that there's, there's two quotes from de Salzman, and the first one is about uh, an inner passivity which allows some, something to enter, which is of a divine nature. And usually we are so full of stuff. Well, I speak for myself. I am so full of stuff, of ideas, of thoughts, of hopes, of, of expectations, uh, of memories, that it doesn't allow uh, a place for something else to come in and actually uh, spark the divinity. Uh, I'll read this slowly. It's from uh, The Reality of Being, uh, which is a book I cannot recommend strongly enough. And what I found uh, personally that I that I cannot do I cannot read the reality of being and say the fourth way and look at other books no matter what they are uh, and I don't because the two aforementioned books blow everything else completely out of the water they really really do they blow them to smithereens because it's real and I'm speaking from personal experience it actually opens something within oneself which, which makes one uh, receptive to the miraculous and the, and the divine. Otherwise, one, what is basically happening with all the other so-called spiritual esoteric books, uh, the, the, it's actually falling on personality, which is, what we, which is something we are not. We are actually in truth, we are actually essence, which is like if you take an egg and you take the white of the egg, the albumum, which is very quite large compared to the yolk, and the, uh, the yolk is the essence. But around the yolk, we don't just have a soft egg white, it's like a, a rock uh, a composition, and it's got to be broken to get to the, to the yolk, which is the essence. And all these other spiritual books are falling on the personality, and what happens to people who are looking at them are actually spinning on their heels and it's just going round and round and round and round and we are very very rarely honest with ourselves and if we step back and we say well I've been reading A, B, C, D, E, F, G for a number of years and I'm no further forward than when I started because it's falling on your personality it's not getting to your essence the Gurdjieff does to your permanent I to that which is immortal and divine uh, this is the quote from The Reality of Being. 
only a mind that is empty can come to a state of not knowing and discover what is true. What is important to see is that words and ideas enslave us in formulas and concepts. As long as we are trapped in a net of consoling belief, we lack the intensity and subtlety required for real exploration. It is only in a state free from contradictions of likes and dislikes, what pleases or displeases me, a state of emptiness that we experience love. And the, the, I've left the, 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 the very, very best to the last part of this talk. But one of the leading proponents of the uh, Gurdjieff work in, in America is an English guy called John Pentland. And he's relatively uh, obscure, uh, but he's of tremendous uh, learning and uh, a never-ending source of knowledge regarding the fourth way work. And he wrote down the following. In the present moment, which I'm in now, and which you are in as you watch this, and it is applied to all present moments within one's life, in the present moment, there is a choice between being taken by my, re my reaction or by being called to a higher presence to a manifestation which is truly corresponding to the situation I am in. In the present moment, there is a choice between being taken by my, re by my reaction. What does he mean by this? We're reacting to something that's external and we no longer exist. We're just a, a, a poo-pourri of, of mechanical reactions and we are not. We are taken by our re reaction. Or we can be called to a higher presence, to a manifestation of that which is truly corresponding to the situation I am in. And what is that situation I am in? or you are in. I am here now, and that in itself is a miracle. And nothing external, and nothing from a mechanical response to it, can actually interfere with the fact that I am here, and this is real, and it is miraculous. The final uh, speech from the Desaltman is what I regard to be uh, the very, very best in the whole book. And people talk and discuss uh, ideas of love and what they believe love to be and so on. And for the most part, it's, uh, it's obviously not in essence, it's in personality. And the real thing is very, very rarely experienced. It's an altered state of consciousness. And here in Britain, we have within a seven year period we have a 75% divorce rate. Doesn't bear thinking about, does it? It's two out of three. It, for example, I love you, I love you, I adore you, I care for you. And a couple of years down the line, you don't even like the person anymore. So it wasn't love in the first place, was it? Not at all. And to get to the real thing, it's like once again going through the rock of uh, personality and get into one's essence. And this is the, uh, the speech by de Saltzman. Centered in my ordinary eye, most of us do not love and are not loved in return. We have very little love in our hearts, which is, which, which is why we beg for it and seek it in substitutes. Our usual emotional state is negative. Now at this point people will, will rebel and say our usual emotional state isn't negative, it isn't. But it is. It's a fact. Uh, one can say anything with these things with the lips and with, with a personality mind. But the usual state, as de Saltzman says, is it, the, usual, the usual emotional state is negative. 
and we are surrounded from the moment we are born we are surrounded by people with negative emotion and it actually poisons it, 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 it it's toxic and the whole of society lives in them this is a, an, an undeniable fact if we just look in our own personal environment and then we look on a global sc scale it's all it's all everything is operative within negativity uh, let me continue with the with the quote all our feelings are reactions in fact we do not know what it would be to have a positive feeling what it would be to love my ordinary eye my ego is always preoccupied with what pleases or displeases me what i like or what i dislike it always wants to receive to be loved and impels me to seek love i give in order to receive perhaps this is generosity of the mind but it is not generosity of the heart to love with my ego but not with my heart is not to love at all deep down this i this ego is always in conflict with the other person and refuses to share now the most explosive line here is the next one and it actually it would just blow one's mind to to a level whereby you could really become real and you would have the possibility of experiencing love because the line goes to live without love is to live in perpetual contradiction a refusal of the real of what is without love one can never find what is true and all human relationships are painful Jean B. Salzman the reality of being page 158 to 159 doesn't get any better ever thank you for listening thank you very much and I hope you've actually gained something from listening to this thank you this is Noel Troy sitting in, a, in an apartment it's about 2 a.m. in the morning in London town in the United Kingdom lots of love to you and thank you again for, for, for watching bye 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 bye